Hello, hello, and welcome to Prono Coders Office Hours, episode number 165. I am your host, Tanya. I'm here with members Brittany, Araboye, Ben, and Jay, and my kin. We're going to get started in just a moment, but if this is your first time tuning in to Office Hours, we do this every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific time, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And we've just added a new session that we're trying out on Mondays at, oh, hang on a second, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. So if you, <laughs> if that's confusing for you because it's not your time zone, I totally understand. So the easiest way to figure out our schedule is to go to pronocoders.com. Go ahead and sign up. It doesn't cost anything to sign up for an account. And once you're in your members portal, check out the office hours tab and it will tell you the schedule. Um, so yeah, do that. And then please do join office hours. It's $99 per month to join us. And you can come to any of those six sessions per week, any or all of them and ask any bubble question that you want. And we will try to answer it. We can't promise answers because we don't have all of them, but we do pretty well and we promise you won't suffer alone. So we had a big launch this weekend. Uh, for those of you who might not be aware, we also are offering now the Pro No Coders Vault. So let's see here, go to the vault so you can see it. We are collecting all of our best answers to members and non-member questions, and we're putting them in the vault. And once you belong to the vault, you can see the video here. Um, we have focused on making the vault super, super searchable. What we noticed when we were looking at other repositories of bubble answers and tutorial videos was that you could follow the logic of the organization, but when it came to actually finding those specific moments that you need in order to understand what's actually happening, um, like, and what you need to do to get your app working. It was very difficult. So not only do we have these videos and I'm not currently logged in, so I can't show you quite at the moment, but what we've done is we've, we've time stamped it for you. So you can find uh, exactly that moment of the video that you're looking for very easily. So do check out the vault. It's only $29 per month to join the vault and get all of those videos. All right, we're gonna get started here with Brittany. Brittany, you have questions, so you can stop me from sharing at any time. Okay. Okay, um, I'm having an issue with the app. Um, so this is on the live mode, not this particular, not this, but the issue that I'm having on live mode is I accepted my own order, I completed it, and it's you know it was approved that everything on both ends but i did not receive the payment on that friday so um something that we did in the back end isn't working so okay. i um i did a test run and i don't see anything here i don't know if i just didn't put it um let's go to where <clears throat> it should be oh it's going slow Brittany, you are not alone. We are. We have just made the decision today to abandon Bubbles Stripe plugin because it yeah. wasn't working. Yes, yeah, something is going on. So um, everything is everything here is doing what it's supposed to do here, but this work this API is not. It's not doing anything. It's not sending. You know. Okay, the, so you're creating the. Payout <laughs> is supposed to be created for the current date and time. Mm -hmm. And then in the payout call, are you scheduling that ahead? Um, so you don't mean to pay them out at the current date and time when you're running that schedule, right? Right. Okay, so, and then, yeah, so go to, so create a new payout. So your schedule, I think what might be happening is you're scheduling that to happen 
right now, as opposed to in the future when you will actually have money in the account to do the okay. payout. So on here, this should say- um, That's That payout <clears throat> should, should be created for the date. And I think, don't you need to update because you're doing one payout for all things at the same time, right? Right, right. Okay, so maybe what we need to schedule is the creation of the payout that there is one, but then we need to be able to update that payout so it doesn't actually go out until it's time for it to go out. Okay. So we, so the first time when the approved button is clicked, mm -hmm. we need to create the thing in the database with all of the information for what that payout is going to hold. How's your database structured around it? Around the uh, payout, we did it here where it's just making the changes to the thing. The payout. Creating. The so, make changes the, so the payout, is that happening in your database? Where Where is it happening where the um, payout is supposed to go out from Stripe? Because the issue you said was that you weren't getting the payment in Stripe, right? Right. Okay. So where are you in your app telling Stripe to do the payout? Um. I don't know. It was working before, but I changed. Oh, send money. Here we go. There you go. So transfer to the seller. And then when is that scheduled to run? Oh, I guess we don't have a schedule. That's the issue. Okay. I was just yeah. creating the payout on the workflow. Got it. You have to tell okay. the to do the payout. Got so you got to schedule that workflow okay. to run. Um, so hang on a sec. I think actually, because you want to run all of the payments at the same time for everyone, right? Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is actually have a button, like you'll just do a temporary page and go ahead and send in a list of, or I guess you don't even have to do a list of users, right? Um, you can put that in the workflow. You just need to schedule that API workflow to create the transfer one time and then repeat it every two weeks, every 14 days or every, no, every seven days because you're paying weekly, right? Okay, so um, let's just do two. Yep. And you just want one little button on that page. All right, and then go back to or duplicate the page and go to the um, the backend workflows. Okay, so duplicate. Oh. oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, cancel. I just mean go up to your tab and right click. Oh, got you. Okay. Yep, and duplicate the tab. Oh, I see. It. And go to back end workflows and go to that send money payout. So you're expecting a freelancer, an amount, and a payout. So I think what we want to do here is a recursive workflow so that every seven days, instead of sending in each um so go ahead and click to add a back-end workflow 
API workflow, the top one. And then uh, we can call this um, initiate payouts or something like that, whatever makes sense for you. All right, and then uh, in the actions. Oh, here. Mm -hmm. uh, what we want to do is schedule the send payout workflow. Now I'm thinking, how are we going to send this list and refresh this list each time? Hang on. So we want to do a search for all of the users with payouts. No, not right there. I'm, I'm still thinking of okay. how we're going to do it. Because um, we can send in an initial one. Does anybody know what I'm getting at and have any thoughts on it? No, not yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> click to add an action and let me just think through this for a second. So data, make changes to a list of things and then types of things do a search. Oh, types of things would be, um, is it, the user, or would you, when you're scheduling the send money payout to, it's expecting a freelancer, right? Right. Which is a user? Right. Okay, so user, then do a search for users. And then you want a user, and then the type is gonna be freelancer. And then go to your send money payout one. It's the amount and it's a payout that we're looking for. And then the payout is going to have a, a date on it. It's going to be a Friday, right? Right. <laughs> And always at midnight. I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> it's always at midnight, the payout. Um, like the date is always set to. Yeah, the. Tw yeah, 12 a.m. Yeah. Okay. All right. So go back to the initiate payouts. Go to the make changes to a list of users instead of search for users we want to search for payouts okay. and then add it in the constraint where the date date to be paid or yeah hang on i'm still thinking we're in the tricky part of the workflows right um, yeah, so date to be paid would be today, right? So it would equal current date and time rounded down to date. Nope, just click more.
Hmm? Oh, date. Date. Okay. And then um, list to change and then click on the list to change part. Click where it says click. And then it would be wherever that freelancer user is stored on the payout object. Is it the payee probably? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's the list of users and then drag that to the first position. So step one, and then in step two, you want to schedule current date and time. And then the freelancer is going to be result of step one, first item. And then the amount is going to be uh, that. I guess we need to send in the payout as well. Okay, that's okay. Um, yeah, change the type of things to payouts. Sorry, I'm just thinking through this as I go. Right. So search for those payouts, the same payouts though. Okay. Do a search for the payouts where the date is today rounded down to date. Okay, now go to, um, and that's it, go to the next one, schedule the workflow. And then the freelancer is going to be results of step one, first items payee. And then the amount will be results of step one's amount, first items amount. And then the payout will be the Results of step one, first item. All right. And then actually, you know what we needed to do for mm -hmm. right now, it's okay. We could schedule, we could change step two to schedule um, an API workflow on a list. So if you right click on step two. Oh, can you change it like that? Yeah. Please Replace find. by. Yep. There you go. Nope. So type, it's okay if we can do it. Type of things will be. Or are we going to run it on the users? No. Undo what you just did, go back to the way we were doing it before. Yep, keep going. It just stopped working. <laughs> I hate it when it does that. <laughs> does it not undo? Okay, mm -hmm. redo everything until it says no more because now we're lost in what you've done and haven't done. We don't want to keep going until it turns gray and it won't let you click it anymore. There you go. Okay. So just delete uh, step two and start over. Are we doing just the regular workflow? Yep, just the regular workflow that we have before. Just the items, P. Okay, 
So go to where it says initiate payouts in the API workflow. There you go, add a new parameter. And the key is gonna be payouts. It's gonna be of type payout. And then it's gonna be a list and it's also gonna be optional. Okay, and so now what we wanna do is um, on step one, we only want to run it when the payouts count uh, is, how are we going to do that? Ah, I keep hit, this is like doing a maze mm -hmm. and you keep running into like the dead end. Like, right. How am I gonna do that? Mm -hmm. Like I know what I want to do. I know the end, like the end goal here, but right. I keep running into like, oh, but that's gonna trigger it. Um, how I'm gonna do that? Let's see. I because I want to say when payouts is empty, but I can't because payouts is a list. Right. So I have to do something else. It's not, it's when it's empty and something else is true. So go back to initiate payouts and add a new parameter and just say, um, what are we gonna call it? Like first run and make it a number. or actually make it a yes, no. There you go. And uh, yeah, okay. So then we make a list, a change to list of payouts only when first run equals yes. Okay, and then schedule the API workflow to send money to payout here and then only when the result of or only when payouts count is greater than zero. All right, and now we're gonna schedule the same workflow to run again, initiate. Uh, this, the entire workflow. On this, oh, I'm stuck on this one. I'm gonna have to move on, okay. and then like we can work on this some tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is like it's so simple. I know it's simple. <laughs> Eli's gonna laugh at me. <laughs> but, no problem. <laughs> but we will get you your answer, I promise. Okay. No, like the thing that I'm stuck on is I need it to work on a list, but I don't know what the list is every time, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I do, if I send it in an initial list of payouts, then it'll only work on those payouts, right? right. So I need some way of searching like who has payouts for today, right? Essentially, mm -hmm. every time. So, but I'll get it. It's okay. the logic is just escaping me at the moment. <laughs> right. No problem. Thanks. Awesome. No worries. Ataboye, you're up. Yes. Hi, everyone. Hi, Welcome. Tara. It's your first question on office hours. Let's yes, do it. Yes, I actually have two, but I'm going to take one for today. Yeah, then pretty much take this other one at subsequent office hours. So, yeah. Oh, I have no, to I, we screen. usually we usually get through everybody's questions so that everyone can have another turn in office hours, just so you know. So, but they don't usually take a half hour. <laughs> That's okay. just me being slow today. Okay, no problem. Let's see how far we can go. Okay, uh, I have to share my screen, I guess. Um, sure, that would that usually makes it easier. Okay, um, get going. Okay, so, um, okay, uh, let me show you guys. No worries. 
So I'm a little bit slow today. Just got off work and I'm a little bit tired. You're tired. That makes perfect <laughs> sense. Yeah. I worked all weekend. I feel you. So chase all the lists. Let me preview this and show. Okay, let me just go to the database. And I think that's where I can explain what the problem is. So in my database, uh, chase orders, yeah, yeah, of the chase. How come is, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I have to. What's happening? I can't seem to find my data. Let me go. Is it in your live database or is it in your? No, no, I haven't yet got. I haven't gotten there yet. So let, let me explain the problem. The problem is, um, when I store data in my purchase order form, right? Um, I I have um, data replicated, and I I think it's uh, based on the workflow that I used. So if I go to the purchase order workflow purchase order workflow to show you what I mean. So I'm adding a list of items to the database, right? But I also have, what's this function called? Is it called an autosave function that he automatically saves the list to the database? So once auto that- Auto-binding? Auto-binding, yes, that's the word. So once the auto binder, I think it automatically saves it to the database, then as that's the data type, then when I now have populated my purchase order list, then my, um, my workflow now replicates. I, 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 I used to think that um, once I now do a new workflow, it will override uh, the data in the database, but I will see that uh, the list of products is there. Then I'll now see another line showing um, um, showing another list. I don't, do you understand what I said? Not quite. So let's okay. see, can you show me like in it, preview yeah. mode? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's best I just run it, right? So the way is I want to create a purchase order. Okay. Actually, yes, yeah. so this is what I mean. Okay, looking at these data tables, you can see um, for this client now, let's say Etihad Energy, right? Um, um, you can see the total costs, right? It's also here because the auto binding function actually stores this first. Then when I now use my workflow to store it, I, I was always assuming that it will override this data but is creating another line automatically got it so let me okay. run it and show you what i mean sure. so for me to create a purchase order create a purchase order um to create a new purchase order okay let's pick a supplier name let's see how the energy uh, uh, just for simplicity, um, not put too much data. Um, what data do I have in my database? Because iPhone. But I need to confirm what I stored in the database again for products. Uh, okay, do do, yeah. Um, supplier name is Etihad. Sorry guys. That's okay. SF Cup. Uh, Mom's beauty console. So, okay. I'm not sure why it's not bringing up the supply. What kind of um? What kind of input is it? Yeah, it's a. Uh, is it a search box? Yeah, it's a search box. Okay. And it's not pulling up any names. I'm not sure why. 
something in my pen. I think I can just go on, but it's not gonna cross over five. Okay, it's not storing any name. Uh, I'm sure this is not working now. Okay, um, well, let's debug that first. So let's go to that uh, search box in the um, in the editor. Okay. I think I get like I see the problem now. Uh, I see where I made a mistake now. Okay. So it's actually picking current sales purchase raw materials name. It's picking the raw materials name. So this header is wrong. Apologies. And even at that, it's not picking anything. But that says it's a text. Did you change that? Is that actually an input? That doesn't look like an input that you're editing. Yeah, it doesn't. It looks. It looks like a text field. So we're we really want to find the search box. Maybe if you use the. Um... Yeah, I think I'm on the wrong one. Ads. It's supposed to be ad purchase order. Apologies. Okay. Got it. No okay, got this now. Okay, so that's a search box, and yeah. it doesn't have. So it's searching for. Raw material, then we're searching for the raw material name. So that's what it is. Okay. So this actually should be product name. Let's put that. It's a placeholder. So, yeah, so that is correct. And you're going to have to refresh your page. Item. Still not bringing up anything. And if I check, this is the for raw materials. Ah, I see. My bad. Okay. Got it now. So quantity, let's say 10. Okay. okay. Let's say another plantain, just for sake. Uh, let's see, just change the price to 500. Let me delete this. So when I now save this to the database, then I'll now go to purchase. Purchase of the list. And you've got so, two. Yes, I have okay, two. So when you click, when you go to create a new one, start the whole process over, like you're going to go create a new, a new one. So yeah, so take me to that button and the workflow on that button. Okay. Nope, not that one. The other button, the is new it, button. Is it the add? Is it this one? No, the new button from before you were even on this page. The the new button when you click for, to for a new purchase. Okay, order. okay, okay. So that has to be on the purchase order list. This new button. Mm -hmm. That one. Okay. So what I suspect is happening is when you click that new button. Okay, so that button is just navigating. Yeah, that's, right. that button just navigates. So that one is to save um, the purchase order. So once 
I list the name of the supplier, list the items I'm actually buying from the supplier, right? The auto binding actually saves um, the price and the quantity in the database. Then at the end of the page, right? You know, there's an add item, that's if I want to add another product, right? Then after that, then I now have a save function to save all the information in the purchase order data type. Yeah, but somewhere you're making a new one. Yes. You're making an extra one. So I need to figure out where the extra one is. Like it, it might be on the save button itself. You're creating a new one save when you button. save and you really should be modifying. Yes, I, I should be modifying. But the problem is for me to modify, I, I just don't know how to okay, navigate. So this is the page for the create new purchase or the go to purchase. So pretty much this is what I do. Um, if, okay, but somewhere else you're creating a new purchase order. And what you want to do on that save button is not create a new purchase order, but make changes to the existing one. So we just have yes. to figure out where that existing one is being stored. So click to add an action at the end of the, um, at, yeah. So after step two, click to add an action. That's just, okay. Yeah. And then go to data and then make changes to thing. And then the thing you want to change, this is the path that we have to figure out. So yes. it's going to be, is it going to be group purchase orders, purchase order? You have to tell me where, where it's being stored on the page that you're able to access it. Okay, so um, I'm storing the list. I, I, I think this stuff actually is a little bit confusing right? because it took me a while because the problem is I, I had to create a way where I can actually create an additional or make my repeating group dynamic. Mm -hmm. So how I did this was um, the, I created a repeating group, right? Mm -hmm. And the repeating group, the data type is type of content is purchases, right? Then the data source is a group outside of the repeating group, which has a type of content of purchase order. Okay. So you're sending data into that group at some point so that it's not empty? Because right now it says data source is empty. So I'm assuming you're using display data at some point to send information into that group yes i'm using display data so okay. the display so data is under this add item i can show you the workflow for where the display data so here this is the workflow for where the display data comes into play where i created a new purchase order i created new purchases and i make changes to the purchase order then i now display the data and data group in group purchase order so every time you add an item you're creating a new purchase order that doesn't seem right okay Okay, so because you just need one purchase order for multiple items, right? Yes, for multiple, I just need one purchase order for multiple items. Okay, so, and then is that, what's the second step there? The second step is I started with creating a new purchase order. Then I, the second step is to create new purchases new purchases so a so that add item that you're adding is a purchase yes okay got it so so but then why is it only making two it seems like it should be making more um or are you only trying with two Yes, yes, I'm only trying with two. I can make more as as you, you know, could as make as more. Okay, so that's this extra step that you don't need. So what yes. I would do is I would um, take that out. So go ahead and delete the step one. This create purchase order. Mm -hmm. Yep. So delete that. Okay. And then I would also go on the save button. So when the save, when button save is clicked, so that second one, I would also delete the step one from there. Okay. 
Okay. And now when you click the, um, the add new button, I would add the purchase order, the there, create a new purchase order when they click that button. So you're saying I should go to add here? Yeah, no, so when the new button that they click to go to that page where they're creating a new purchase order, Okay. You, so you're using a combination of the auto binding and yeah. um, and saving things like the purchases to the purchase yeah. order. So you need to have a purchase order to work with on that page, right? Yes. So when they click the new button and they go to that page, even if you just save it in draft form, you're going to go ahead and save a purchase order um, and create a new purchase order when they click the new button. Then what you're going to do is use that purchase order as the one that you're modifying as they're creating the different parts of the purchase order. Does that make sense? No, can you, can you say that again, please? Yeah, actually, um, so here I'll share my screen. Sometimes it's easier if you can follow along if I can point, right? So what we'll do is we'll create a purchase order structure. Yeah, I think this is sort of like a, a cart structure. I think that's a... Uh, yeah, yeah a little bit, yeah. So, so we're gonna have a purchase order. Then we're gonna have the PO, yeah, the purchase, right? Those are mm -hmm. the two parts so far. There's, there's more to it, I, I understand. So then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make a new page and we'll call it a purchase order. Right, and then I'm gonna have a button here and it's gonna be new purchase order. And when I click that button, that's when I'm going to make the new purchase order. Okay. Okay. And then we'll just call this name. Or that won't save. Okay, so this is gonna create my purchase order. Then what I'm gonna do is when that is clicked and there's a new purchase order, I'm gonna have a group here. It's gonna be of type purchase order. <clears throat> And then this data source is gonna be empty. So when I click this button, in addition to creating the new purchase order, I'm gonna display data in that group. Now what I can do in this group is I can say, I can have an input for the name here, and I can make this auto binding. order. Do not do what I'm doing here. This is just for demonstration purposes. Yeah. There's a whole other conversation around privacy rules. Um, but just to make a rule that is always true, I'm just going to say current user is current user. And I'm going to allow auto binding on the name, right? So now when I click this button, it's going to create a new purchase order with the name purchase order. And then I'm going to be able to edit the name and it will, it will resave the name to whatever I edit here. That's the auto binding saving, right? And then I'm going to have a repeating group here. The repeating group is going to be of type purchase. And I'm going to, I don't know if it'll let me save a new field on here or not. Purchase where, yeah, it doesn't let me save a new field. So I'm gonna go over to my data type here for the purchase here. And the first one's gonna be purchase order. 
of type purchase order. Right, and then I'll probably have another field that I want to be able to edit, right? So then I come back to the design and I say where the purchase order equals parent group's purchase order. And then I'm going to put some more inputs here. I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have the name here and this will auto bind name and I'll have to do the new rule here. I'm gonna do the same one where the current user is current user, allow auto binding name, right? And I'm gonna have a button. It's gonna go in here and it's gonna say new purchase. When I click this button, it's going to create a new purchase. The name new purchase. All right. So are you following so far, Adeboye? Yes, I am. Okay. All right, so this is essentially the structure that you have. The difference is, is that every time you were clicking this button here, you weren't just creating a new purchase, you were creating a new purchase order. And that's why you were getting um, duplicate purchase orders, right? So now what we're doing instead is I'm creating the purchase order first and I'm populating it in a group and then okay. auto binding what I want to that purchase order. And then I'm creating a new button for the new purchase. But all I'm doing when I'm creating the new purchase here is I'm creating the new purchase with the name and I'm going to associate it with the parent group's purchase order, right? So there's only one button that's going to create a new purchase order. That's this one. And then there's only one button that's gonna create new purchases. But when I create a new purchase, it's automatically going to be associated with this purchase order. So if I preview that, it looks like this. So now I have a new purchase order. I'm going to say Tanya's first purchase order. And that's auto bound. So now that's going to be saved into my database. We can go and we can look at my purchase orders and I have one, right? Now I want to add a new purchase to it. So I could say one purchase, right? And then I can say two purchases and so forth, right? And I can add a third one, three. And so now in my database, I still only have one purchase order, but I have three different purchases, but all of those purchases are associated with my original purchase order. Okay. 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 Yeah, I think that's it. So okay. yeah, all these purchases are tied to that one purchase, purchase order. order. Exactly. So now when I want to show... Um, if I wanted to grab this list, I could say, do a search for of purchases where the purchase order is this purchase order. Okay. Specifically. Yep. Okay. I think, I think, okay. I think I get it now. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I'll get that a shot. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That works for me then. Okay. Thank you. I think I, I will just stop with this for now. Let me just get on this because then once I'm through with this, then I'll come back for the other one. Sounds fine. great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Ben, are you back? I didn't see if you came back. I am. Yet. Yeah. Awesome. It's your turn. All right. Who's ready for a quick win? Um, yeah, I'm always ready for a quick win. <laughs> okay. So, um, did what um, you recommended and changed over to parameters. But I'm just trying to figure out the page load situation because whenever I do, um, you know, on page load, 
do this because it's a one page app whenever I go to any section it just keeps taking me back to the page load mm, got it okay so do you want to share your screen and show me what's happening exactly um I, I took it off obviously because um, because it was causing yeah it was an infinite loop of yeah. reloading yeah. the page okay so what we do in that case is on page load when you are doing something to set the a parameter specifically because there it's like they're just loading the page for the first time we yeah. usually add a condition when that url parameter is empty okay so go to page app uh, parameter would be, let's have a look. View is dashboard. Thanks for turning me on to parameters, by the way. It's so much better. You're welcome. And then the only when, so you would go oh should i put the other one in because that's just one oh section. sure yeah and i need this one to load as well dashboard is brands There is. Yep. Cool. And then you said a conditional. Yep. And then the conditional would be only when, when uh, the get URL and then you could choose um, trying to think, think if you need one or just both, but definitely like if the view is empty, then you wouldn't be showing them anything, right? So only when parameter name view. Is empty. Or um, And then they're always going to have, like, the view is always going to say something, right? Uh, yes. And then is the, the, the dashboard yeah. will just be based on. What view you're on. What view you're on. So I think that's it. Just get from, uh, yeah. So when that's empty, then you're going to fill it in with, with the view being the dashboard and the dashboard being set to brand, right? Sure. Okay. Let's, let's, let's give it a crack. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, Bubble, you can do it. Wake up, it's Monday. You're late for work. Like my well, kid this morning. My kid's <laughs> alarm apparently didn't go off this morning, probably because she didn't set it. And it's <laughs> like, and I didn't even realize I was, a, I was awake for a few minutes. And then like her dad was like, what are you doing still sleeping? And I was like, oh, it's my bad too. Yep, that worked. Okay, cool. Quick win. Quick win. Thank you. Yay. All right, Jay, you're up. Okay, so can you see? I can. Uh, my goal is that when you click these, these move. So they do move, but they're not 100% consistent. Something is wrong. Like okay. nothing happened just then. I don't know why. So here's what I have. Um, 
I've, I've, I've watched a, a drag drop tutorial and I used some stuff from that. So, but it didn't end up working. So, uh, what am I trying, trying to get the, uh, there we go. The computer is just like, please stop. I actually like shut down my computer and let it rest for a minute and then started it back up for office hours. I was I really like, need to do that too. I've I don't know how long it's been working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, what I've got done is uh, ultimately this stuff that that list of people in the order, the order needs to end up in this data type approval flow. But because okay. uh, this ultimately needs the list of stakeholders and then the uh, uh i guess it needs a list of approval steps um my first question is when you have two lists like this if i add john smith and then also add the number one and then i add somebody else in the number two then later when i'm using that data are those going to be paired properly so this goes back to the um the a template that I showed you last week, the top shelf template. Right, that was for drag and drop. Right, so using the, um, so not relying on it being an integer, right? Because in order to do what, what you're trying to do without having to reorder everything in the list, then you're gonna have to use mathematical equations, right? right. So I copied one from, I tried that ones and I tried another ones, uh, another, uh, you know, templates uh, math. It didn't work for me because the databases were so different. So I also made this uh, interim database to just handle that work, uh, repeating group. And then later at the end, I can give them a button and they can save everything in here to where it ultimately needs to go. So this one, I can have the individual users without the list. So here's the workflow. Right now, it doesn't have the complicated math because it wasn't working, so I tried something different. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Okay, yeah, this is a, it's a UI bug. So uh, it's uh, the thing to change is the repeating group and the list of things in it. It's filtered by the current cells index. I don't know why. And then it's the current cells index minus one. Do you know what the math should be? Um, not off the top of my head. I would just end up referring back to the same template that I showed yeah. you from yeah, last week. Yeah, work. All right. Well, that's my question. I mean, Thank you. The, yeah. What you're trying to do, like just mathematically, is you're trying to figure out, okay, when you when you click the up button, you want it to be an order lower than it is, right? Right. Lower than the one above it and higher than the one above that, right? Yes. So like you just have to figure out how to express that mathematically. Um, I think the math in, I can show you the math again and we can talk through it if you want. That would probably be helpful. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. No worries. So what we're referring to is the top shelf template. Can you, uh, Kim, can you put a keyword in there that we're talking about top shelf? Sure. Thank you. This one here it was this one I made. So drop area above this widget has a group dropped on it. So this is when you're clicking the up arrow, right? So you want to change the order number and it's the group holder widget above numbers. So this is referring to 
which is so there's this little group here that's keeping track of the number right i've got one of those in the okay. in, in this it got it so group holder widget above number uh, plus current cells widgets orders widgets order number divided by two uh -huh. and i think the the thing is is you if when you originally start with the group, you you have to assign an order number to it, right? So if we go back and we look at this here, it explains that. And does it tell you what, I think I just numbered it like one to five, like if it was five items, I just put one, two, three, four, five. So it just has to have a number in it to start working. So looking at yours, let's see here. So we have widget. And a widget has an order number and we don't have any widgets in here. Oh, we do. We have one, two, three. And I showed you the, how it changed it to 1.5. Yeah. So, yeah. so we did this last week. So one, two, we had one, two, three, and then we moved one and it changed to 1.5. Yes. It was based on this map here. So the group holder widget above number and this is the way they, they do this is this group is labeled that. So we already, we know it's an above number because we are, we have it labeled as such. If it was below, it would be dropping on a different group. And that's what prompts the workflow specifically for this math to run. So we just take the, number that's being stored in that to start with, which if we look at it, the original data source of this is going to be repeating group widgets, list of widgets, item number, input previous cells, numbers, value, what's that? Input previous cell numbers, values, order number, input, what is that? Let's find on. So that's another group here that's just taking the current cells index and subtracting one. So that's how we know which number, like, how is that working exactly? This one we want. Because this is how we're setting the order of the group is we're keeping track of that index number, right? So the repeating group widgets, list of widgets, item number equals the input previous cell numbers, values, order number. So we're trying to put, when I drag this one up to here and drop it on this group here, I wanna save it as the order of the one above this one, right? which is why this group up here is keeping track of the index number of the one above it. Are you following? I mean, I, th I think so. <laughs> so when I wanna drag widget two and put it between widget one and three, in order to do that, I need to know what this index number is. But bubble doesn't necessarily make it easy to know, like I can't reference this index number from this group here. But what I can do is I can know the index number of this group and subtract one, right? Because yeah. I need to know this value in order to place the, the order number between 
this order number and this order number. Right, and that's what this math is all about. This math is figuring out. So if I take the group holder widget above number, that's going to be list of widgets. Item number. Yeah, because it keeps changing the order numbers based on where things are in this repeating group. So repeating group widgets, list of widgets, item number is going to be the index of the previous cell, right? So I think in here, if I drag it onto this one, it's going to be one. It's going to be that number. No, wrong one. So one plus the current cell widgets order number, which is going to be two divided by two is one. So it'll put it in two's place. So if I come here, let's just for the sake of being able to see things. group. Well, that only works in the context of the repeating group, though. So let's just try it. We'll just come here. So we have widget one, three, and two. And in our database, we have order number widget one is one, Widget two is two and widget three is between them at 1.5. I'm just going to change this real quick and change this to three. Go back to the way that it was originally. So let's work out the math. One, two, three. So if I put three and drop it onto that group above in widget two, it's going to take one and it's going to add three divided by two, which is one and a half. I think I'm following it. I just know that's just where we were before. So it's probably going to be 1.5. It's just figuring out the halfway point between one and two here, like what the order is. Because if I go back to my database, it's going to be back to where we were. Yeah, 1.5, let's do it again. If I drag two above three, it's gonna change that order number again. And now it's one and a quarter, right? So instead of having one, two, three, I have the fractions, but it's still in order. So let's just do it a couple more times. So you can see if I drag here, we keep going halvesies to keep things in order. I don't know if that helps, Jay. I'm just, I would copy that math and just understand the, the purpose of those two groups there. The one just keeping track of the previous cells number in the group and the one, the, the drop area group number. Okay, I'll, I'll try it. I don't have access to the, like, I can't get the- um, The top shelf? No, the, uh, the expression for the data source in, I, I don't, I'm not able to access the expressions he has in the data sources for the numbers groups, the way that it's done here. Groups. Widget. So whatever your repeating groups list is, right? Mm -hmm. So item number, and then this is just an input that we have placed up here. So this input, just this one up here, which is the initial content is current cells index minus one.
So it's just referring to an input where the initial content is keeping track of something specific. Okay. All right, uh, I'll dig into this some more. Thanks okay. for your help. You're welcome. All right, let's see. I think Jordan already took off, but I got to Brittany Adeboye. Ben and Jay, and it's time we're going to wrap up the office hours section of this session. If you would like to join us for office hours, please go sign up at pronocoders.com. We will tackle your questions in office hours. We're moving into the after hours section of office hours, which is members only. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the live, but we will be back here this evening at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time for office hours episode number 166. Please join us then. Thank you everyone for watching.